Hey, what's going on, Warriors? Thanks for watching. So these are the ABCs of Attack by Combination in the official Jeet Kune Do curriculum. These are the first five. Of course, there's more. But these are meant to be your building blocks for combinations. So you don't rigidly have to do everything by the books every single time. But you should practice them that way until you feel confident so that you can bring out the creativity later. Don't jump around in the beginning because it's just too confusing and you want to build skill development. So go through the combinations in order, exactly the way we describe them here. And then over time, like, you know what? Maybe I'll throw in a knee. Maybe I'll do something else. Maybe I'll throw in a rear side kick, whatever. So from a stationary perspective, all the combinations you're gonna notice are encapsulated by a kick. A kick on the front end and a kick on the end of the combination. That is to symbolize coming into range. I need to kick and enter into boxing or hand range. And I wanna kick as I exit to fill the gap in case somebody's coming back at me or to just charge forward again. So the kick that we use is called the out tech, which is just a round kick. So stationary, I'm just gonna pivot my foot inward and just throw the round kick. Now this is a John Fawn style kick, not tie boxing. So I'm not gonna open my hip and use that right now. Totally applicable, you could definitely do that if you want to, but the way I learned this is the way I'm showing you now. So I'm just gonna lift my knee and turn the foot in. By turning the foot in, I can angle my knee. Now, what's the intended target? Is it the inside of the leg? Is it the rib? Yes. Those are all targets of the round kick, just like in Muay Thai, but also you wanna think groin. So sometimes in the air, you'll see me do more of a steeper acute angle this way, and it's because in my head, I'm thinking groin, which is the way that kick was predominantly used in JKD because there are no rules on the street, right? Okay, so with the kick out of the way, the combinations that we're gonna use just come straight from Western boxing. You want your form to be identical to Western boxing. It's not that we do some magical Kung Fu JKD form and then we do some other style over here. It's just straight from boxing. So in fact, uh, Sifu Richard Bastillo had a number of successful uh, boxers, people that went all the way to the Olympics, and so did Guru Dan and Asano down in California when they had a fight program, and even world champions in MMA like Eric Paulson and those kind of things. That's JKD right there. Okay, so the combinations we're gonna use, one, is gonna be cross, hook, and cross. Two, cross, body hook, and cross. Three, cross, uppercut, it's diagonal. See my shoulder is covering my jaw. Don't swing from the hip on the uppercut. Cross, uppercut, right there, cross. Then overhand, uppercut, overhand. You notice on the overhand, I'm hitting the chin going through it and I'm stopping about where the rib is with my arm bow. So in a sense, if you hit the mitt or anything, if you have a partner hitting focus mitts, it should look like the same angle as you threw a hook. It's gonna be a little different on the bag, I'll explain that in a second. The last one on this set of five is three straights, starting with the cross, jab, and cross. So stationary again, round kick, cross hook, cross, round kick. Round kick, cross, body hook, cross, round kick. Round kick, cross, uppercut, cross, round kick. Round kick, that's right. Round kick, overhand, uppercut, overhand, round kick. Round kick, three straights, round kick, that's it. Same thing on the bag, I'll do from the right knee, okay? So I'm gonna try to be stationary, so I'm gonna try to move my foot in, Sometimes the bag is moving, and once you're used to bag work, you always want to move with it, so you might catch me off guard. But I'm going to try to hit it always when it's coming back towards me so I can get stamina and power generation off hitting the bag. I don't want to create swing. I want to hit it as the impact is at its greatest. So round kick, cross, hook, cross, round kick. Round kick, cross, body hook, cross, round kick. Move around a little bit. Round kick, cross, uppercut, cross, round kick. Round kick, overhand, uppercut, overhand. Now, did you catch that? So when I feed the overhand here, I want it to hit flush. So I cut an angle. I don't want to hit down on the bag like this. I want it to arrive where it's flat. And it does, it looks almost like a rear hook because that's the torsion that I need to throw a good overhand. Uppercut, overhand, round kick. That's it. Okay, so last one is round kick, three straights, round kick. That's it. So you want to check the bag, you can jab it, just don't ever give your buddy a hug. You don't have a bag, you got gloves, 
I've got a foundational wall here, it's concrete from toe to ceiling. So I can just use that to work this a little bit lightly. I don't know if you can see all the way over here. I'm not gonna round kick it, because there's no surface area. But I could give it like a front kick, cross, stay up, cross, whatever combination. Front kick, cross, up, cut, cross. And in my gloves, I'm not putting my hand into a complete fist. It's like I'm holding a roll of quarters. I don't wanna feel my knuckles against the center block. Okay, so then the last thing I'll leave you with is you might need to do this on a piece of furniture. Maybe you have like a nice upholstered couch. Don't break your, uh, your partner's favorite piece of furniture, but you could just tap the furniture a little lightly, change the elevation. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about creativity. There's no reason you couldn't chain these together or change the tools. So I could go like sidekick, cross, body hook, head hook, and cross. Sidekick, I could go sidekick, overhand, uppercut, straight, round kick, whatever you want to deploy. I could go round kick, cross hook, cross, rear kick. Nothing wrong with that at all, but take my suggestion, try to build a foundation first. Make it so these routines, these combinations are automatic. Your guard position is good, your heel is up and back, your footwork is strong, your chin is down. When one hand goes out, your shoulder covers your jaw. So you have a good grasp on the fundamentals. Because if you just go out from the beginning, making stuff up, you're not gonna have that structure and you're not gonna develop skill. Just like practicing a note or something in music, you gotta get a little bit of repetition and then pretty soon you start seeing the results. All right, Warriors, thanks again for watching. This has been Sifu Joe with the Warriors. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. We really appreciate you, and I wish everybody out there the absolute best. If you have any questions, please send them our way. We always love comments and feedback. And with that, Warriors out.